So last time we left off by adding some music and some sound effects to our game, now what I'm going to be showing you this time is how to add some simple post-processing to the game, such as adding a simple background and some lights for our player. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Now real quick, we, before we actually begin, I do want to mention that I went ahead and I actually made a light texture and it's in the assets folder inside the sfx folder and it's just called light.png and that's what we're going to be using to make our light but we're going to actually start by setting up our simple background first so open up the world scene and you will notice that i went ahead and actually changed up the level and i added a bunch of more enemy spawn points but that doesn't really matter but uh, anyway we want to go ahead and add a canvas layer as a child of the world and we want to go ahead and rename it uh, right away to something like background so that we know what it is and we're going to move it all the way to the top and while we're at it we might as well move the canvas layer that contains our GUI to the top as well. Now with the background selected I want to go ahead and add a child to it as well. In this case it's going to be a color rect. Then I'm going to go to layouts full rect and then I'm going to go to the inspector and set a color for it. In this case I'm going to set it to a dark blue color because that's what I chose. You can choose whatever color you want though. And then with the background selected once more, we want to go to the inspector once more and then click on the layer drop down and set up a layer for it. In this case, it's going to be minus one because we want the background to be behind every single layer. Now we launch the game and join the game. You will see that we actually have a simple background that basically goes on forever in our game. So with that, we have our simple background set up. Now let's actually go about adding the light to our player. So to do that we want to go ahead and open up our player scene. Then inside the player scene we want to select the player and we're going to add a light to the node as a child of it. Then I want to go ahead and select my light.png and click and drag it into the texture field of my light 2D node inside the inspector. And that should actually um, add the light to our player already. Now we can start uh, messing around with some of the parameters, such as the scale if we want, the color, and the energy. I'm not really gonna go into specifics of what each parameter does though. So I'm just gonna keep it to a white color and then I'm, the only thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is adjust the energy to something like 1.3 I guess, that should be fine. And then I'm gonna go over to the the range drop down and then I want to go to the layer min and set that up so this is the layer that's going to be the, so it's going to be the bottom most layer that's going to be affected so it needs to be something lower than our background layer so that it actually affects our background layer and layer max is going to be left to what it is and then we actually have to turn on the shadow so there's a shadow drop down and make sure that's enabled we're going to make a filter and we're going to use a pcf5 filter in this case and then we're going to do filter smooth of five like i said i'm not really going to explain how everything works here uh, we're just going to set up the lights and i might do a video on lighting in the future so look forward to that anyway that should be our light uh, setup but we can't actually see it and that's because we don't have a background so in order to see it it, we're gonna go to our world here where we actually have a background and we're gonna instance in our player now we do need to make sure that we actually uh, delete the player when we run the game otherwise it's gonna cause some errors but as you see once we add the player you can see that the light is actually on our player because it's a lot easier to see it with the background now you could right click and click on editable children on for the player and that lets you actually adjust the parameters for the player's children such as the light here where I'm checking other values for the energy and see what I like. So that's one way you can test out your lighting and mess around with the parameters there and then you can write those down and then actually adjust them in your player scene if you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually delete the player before I forget to delete it so that it doesn't cause any errors here. And before I actually do that, let's see if our shadows are working. And it does appear that they are in fact working. Now that that now that now I know that everything is actually working, we can delete the player so that, I, like I said, it doesn't cause any errors. Now, back in our player scene, I am going to go and adjust the energy to 1.5 because I actually liked how it looked on the world when I was testing it. And if we run the game now, you will see that our players actually have lights on them now and that the um, 
walls and stuff like that actually do cause shadows so everything does appear to be working just fine which is great and our game is already looking a lot better than it was before now you could add more uh, lights for example to your enemies if you want or to the player bullets if you want you can go ahead and do that I think for now I'm just gonna leave it on the player though Now I'm gonna go about and actually make the background a little bit more fancy. Now originally I was gonna use a parallel parallax background but instead I'm gonna actually use some particles. So with the world selected I want to go ahead and actually add a particle and it should be called particle 2D. So I want to add that as a child of the world. And then I want to make sure that this little box here is inside the uh, viewport, uh, the little viewport box that you see here. If it's not inside it, then the particles won't actually render. So you need to make sure that the little box of the particles are it's inside your viewport. And actually, we're going to go ahead and drag the particles 2D as a child of the background instead, just so that we make sure that it takes up the entire area. And with the particles 2D now selected, that's actually set up. So there's a process material drop down. There we can click on empty and do new particle material. Then we can click on the particle material and a bunch of settings appear. And you can see the particles already emitting, but uh, they're not emitting how we want them. So we have to adjust some of the options here. So we're gonna start off by specifying a Y gravity of zero. Then the direction, we want the direction for the X to be minus one so that the particles emit to the left. And then spread, we want it to be zero. And then we want to give it an initial velocity of, I don't know, let's try something like 100. I think that should be fine. So our particles are actually emitting now, but we also want to make uh, it be a little bit random. So we're going to set a random velocity of 0.5. And you can see the particles are emitting now but they are only a small amount. So we're gonna set a larger amount of particles to emit. And in this case, I'm setting it to 100. And a lot more particles are actually emitting now, which is great, but they're still not looking how we want them. So let's actually adjust the emission shape here. So let me see where the, okay, there it is, emission shape dropdown. So then under the shape dropdown, we can select box. And now the emission shape is a box and we can actually specify the box extents. So for the Y, we wanna do 720 divided by 2 because 720 I believe is the height of our viewport and then I'm dividing that by 2 since it's essentially taking like half of the height and actually I'm gonna do 400 instead so that I make sure that the particles are actually covering the entire height of my viewport and you know has a little bit extra and if you actually want to see like the little bounding bucks match your uh, your emission shape you can adjust the visibility wrecked under the drawing drop down but I'm just gonna leave it the same as it is now with that it's starting to look a lot better now but we still have to adjust a couple things here so for example for the time we want to change the lifetime to something a little bit more so let's do 20 for now you can always adjust it if you need to and the particles are actually lasting a lot longer which is looking a lot better now since they actually get the chance to spread out and move across the entire background now let's see what else we want to adjust and we actually want to adjust the pre-process one as well which essentially is uh it pre-renders i i guess um uh, a certain amount of particles and you specify it with seconds so I'm doing like 10 seconds of pre-rendered particles for our game essentially there now I want to set up a uh, scale for it as well because the particles are a little bit too small so under the scale drop down I'm gonna give it a scale of let's say uh, four should be good. They might be a little bit big, but we can actually adjust that by randomizing the scale as well So we're just gonna max out the scale random and that should actually look pretty good and I'm actually liking it So that should be fine now That pretty much does it for our particles now I might do a video on the particles in the future as well and in this video I'm just quickly going through all the options that you can do but hey, hey maybe in the future we'll have a particles video and I think that's Oh, I actually want to adjust for the particles for the background now, so that should actually be good. So if I run the game now, we should have particles in our world, and they're looking great. So 
everything is surprisingly is actually working and looking a lot nicer that's for sure but before we had any particles or uh, background our game looked pretty uh pretty budget it still looks a little bit budget but it looks a lot better <laughs> that's what matters now uh, there's a couple of things that I still want to adjust, well one main thing that I want to adjust and that is I want to set a limit for my camera and actually keep it inside our level so that you can't actually see outside the level. So to do that I want to go to my player scene, select the camera 2D for our player and set up the limits which are in the limits drop down. So for the left we're going to give it a limit of 0, for top we're going to give it a limit of 0 as well and then for the right and bottom I'm not sure yet. So to actually figure that out I want to go to the world. I want to click on view and then make sure that uh, show guides is actually on here. With that, I can actually click and drag a guide from my ruler here as you see here. And I'm actually going to use these guides to see where I want to place the limits. So as you see, they do show up a number when you're actually uh, dragging it across the screen. And you can actually get rid of them by just clicking on them and dragging them up or as you saw there. And as you, what matters, what we actually care about is the number that shows on the bottom left there. So for the bottom, it was 2205. And now I just want to figure out the right side limit that I want to place. So just click and drag a guide from the left ruler. And it looks like it's going to be around 3440. So for the right, I'm going to place a limit of 3440. Now with that, we should actually have... Uh, you know, we shouldn't no longer be able to see uh, outside of our level because the camera is limited to the limits that we specified. So if we join the game here, as you can see, we can no uh, we can no longer actually see uh, to the left outside of the level or to the left or to the if I can talk to the top. Now let's actually check the bottom as well here, and hopefully I don't actually get killed uh, be by an enemy here because if we do, then uh, we can't actually see if we are actually uh, you know limiting the camera to the bottom as well and it does seem to be working which is great now let's actually uh, do one more thing so let's go to project project settings here and then for uh, the rendering quality we want to make sure that two options are on so the use nvidia rect flicker workaround and then the use pixel snap i uh, have those both on then under display window, I <laughs> um, for some reason uh, it seems that our width and height are a little bit maxed up. Uh, so it, it, for the height, I think I actually changed that to 720, and then I forgot to change it for the width. So we want to make sure that width is 1280, and then if we scroll down, we want to set the aspect. Well, you can keep it to keep if you want, but I'm gonna set it to expand so that we don't get any black bars here and we do want to adjust the particle location again because we did uh, resize the viewport uh, width and height there so make sure that uh, you do move your particles if you do this and if we run the game now and click join on both instances here and it should actually no longer get the bad, uh, you know, the black bars, but now there's another issue here where it actually stretches our viewport and we can see more of the level vertically. And that's because, well, we're expanding like uh, the option and the aspect uh, set inside the project settings. So we're essentially ex ex expanding the, uh, the viewport based on the size of the window here. So if we just minimize the screen here, you see that it looks just fine. And if we full screen the, the uh, viewport once more, everything looks fine as well. It's just when you uh, start resizing the windows into some weird uh, sizes here, as you will see here. So as you see, as you resize it more, uh, and you, you give it less width, it shows more uh, of the level vertically. So that's just kind of how it works. So. Yeah, with that, we're basically done here. So everything's looking fine, and, but uh, there is, you know, a little bit of uh, slight issues still with the game. And one of those issues is a bug that actually causes the game to crash. So we're going to actually fix that, and that's inside the enemy script. So in this case, to fix that bug, we want to set up an if statement. So if target player is not equal to null, then we want to do this logic here. Else, we want to just go ahead and do motion is equal to vector to 
0.0.0 and that should fix a bug that the game gets sometimes where it actually causes the game to crash because uh, it doesn't have a target player for an enemy when uh, when an enemy dies essentially and one last thing i'm actually gonna change the aspect and instead of expand i'm gonna do something else so let's do keep height instead and that should work a little bit better than expand you can mess around with whatever settings you want but this is what i'm gonna use and as that as you can see everything is actually looking pretty good if we go ahead and resize our window here you will see that it keeps the same height it's just pretty much like the width that it just with it and I think this option works the best for our game here so you can like I said choose whatever option you want but with that that actually does it for this tutorial now there's quite a few things to mention still like the game is definitely not bug free that's for sure there's still some bugs but I think we're at a good part where we can end this tutorial series off. So hopefully you guys found this tutorial series useful, and as always, if you liked the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.